In today's video, I am using an amazing new toy to take studio macro photos just like this. So I've been in my studio today and I've been playing around with a bit of an idea for a commercial style shot. Now in short, it is a whiskey glass with a measure of whiskey in it, but I really wanted to add another element here. Now in particular, I wanted to play with the idea of smoke because whiskies are often talked about with flavors of smokiness and peatiness. And so I kind of wanted to take that to a slightly more exaggerated extent and actually have smoke coming out of the whiskey, swirling around the whiskey. And I'm gonna do that with this. Where have I put it? Oh, it's here. It's a handheld smoke machine. Now this is the Smoke Genie. It is a handheld smoke machine. I have been testing this for CNET, but I thought I really wanted to put it to some actual product use. Now in short, this is just a device that you fill up with some liquid and then you press a button and it starts churning out smoke. Like this. Whee. The smoke is safe to breathe, it's safe around food, it's safe on clothing and other things, so I've got no problems with it being in my studio, although I will periodically open a window and just get some fresh air in. Now in short, it is essentially like a big vape because it's not actually creating fire, it's just simply using a, uh, well, I don't know what you call it, one of those heated capsule things that creates all the smoke. But it's a lot more elaborate than a vape pen. You get a lot more control over how much smoke. You can create a variety of different effects with it. But in particular, you can create essentially like a dry ice effect where that smoke kind of flows out from subjects and will like envelop something in a way that other smokes wouldn't. And that's what I've been playing with today with this shot. And I've been really enjoying some of the test shoots that I've done. So I'll take you through, first of all, the setup here. So first of all, our actual surface. What this is, is a piece of uh, mirrored perspex, which I use for quite a lot of my product photography, mostly because you get a really beautiful mirrored image of your product. And that gives you some really great ways to kind of get creative with having a really nice reflection in there, but it also helps kind of bounce the light around. And certainly for glassware, I've found it can look really, really good. The light is really important. And I've actually done a couple of things here. I started off by getting a strip box. Now this is really, really uh, long, but it's also really thin. But I've actually made it even thinner by essentially just squashing it together, just using some masking tape to hold it in place. And that's creating a really, really thin strip of light. I'm gonna to come to that later. Now, my backdrop I've played around with a little bit. At first I had a plain black backdrop, um, but I kind of didn't like that we just had a fall to darkness look in the image. So what I've done is just tape up essentially a like a rock marble effect printed backdrop uh, up as a little bit of background interest, but it's incredibly subtle. You can barely see it in the frame. It's certainly not adding much to the image except just a little bit of extra, almost texture detail in that backdrop to again, just mean that it's not falling totally into darkness. Now the glass is a very classic whiskey, uh, tumbler, I don't know, it's probably got a name, uh, a whiskey glass um, that you'll find in a lot of uh, shops in Scotland or online. And I've actually put that uh, lying down on the glass table and then I used a pipette to put in some, actually it's not whiskey that I've put in there, it's a very cheap cooking brandy. You would never waste good whiskey on a proper photo shoot like this unless you need it to be completely colour matched to a particular brand but I just used a pipette to get that in just to make sure that I'm not spilling anywhere. I want it to all look very, very neat. Now I put everything in place using various cloths and things so I didn't get fingerprints on it. It should look really nice and clean and neat. So we should be good to go. Now on my camera, I, I'm using my 24 105 mil lens. Now, strictly speaking, that's not a macro lens, so I guess this isn't really a macro shot, but it is about close up and it is about using lighting in exactly the same way as I would any other macro shot. So as far as I'm concerned, it's basically a macro shot. Now I did try this with my 100 mil macro, but it's just a little bit too close in. Instead, what I needed to do is go slightly wider angle at about 50 mil so I can get more of the table in front of the lens. 
The actual light that I'm using is a Godox AD200 strobe. Now for this shot, I wanna be using strobes rather than LED light because it's gonna be very, very high power and I would need a very bright LED to match what this is gonna be putting out. This is gonna be shooting at full power for almost every single shot and I wanna make sure that I'm getting a big burst of light to help freeze the motion of the smoke because that smoke is going to be moving around. So I want to keep that nice and sharp with a faster shutter speed. Right, let's start taking some photos. So I've particularly gone with a really long light source and I've got it close and it goes all the way up here because that's going to mean that essentially the glass can see this light all the way along these curves. But I don't want it to just be one big square of white on top of the glass. What I want it to be is a very thin line that just really carves out its shape. It's a very clean commercial look. And you get that simply by using a very thin light source because it's literally reflecting back the light source that it sees. So if you've got a really nice thin strip, then you're gonna get a thin strip reflecting in the glass. Now I've been playing around for quite some time, experimenting with my settings, experimenting with the light position, but fundamentally it comes down to having the glass on here, the light is going all the way up here. I've actually got the light slightly behind the subject and then pointed more towards this way because I didn't want it firing too much on the background. And that also just helps give more of an edge lighting. But I'm f22, which is my maximum aperture for this lens. No, I am not bothered about diffraction. And I'm at 125th of a second. ISO 100. And I'm manually focusing and I'm using f22 because I wanna make sure that pretty much all of that glass is in focus and f22, it pretty much is. I don't want some narrow depth of field. I want this to look nice and pin sharp as much of it as I can because I do want that crisp commercial look. The sort of shot I'm going for is something that you might imagine seeing as part of like a magazine advert or as part of an editorial spread about smoky whiskies that you'd open a page of GQ and there'd be a double page spread of smoky whiskey and it would be this shot. So if I take a quick shot with these settings, pop, and straight away, I mean, I really do like how this looks. I love that the crispness of that line. And the great thing is, is that this is just a one light image. Often with these types of shots, I'm setting up two lights, three lights, four lights, maybe even more. I'm setting up reflectors and everything else to kind of bounce that light back in. But actually here, I really don't think I need it. In particular, what I like is that we've got this lovely highlight also going around the rim. And that isn't another light, that's just the way that the glass is thicker around the rim and it simply catches that light. Next up then, bringing in our smoke machine. Now, you can get a variety of nozzles for this and I've got several others, but I do particularly want this one that's basically a small hose because then I can essentially poke that hose into the glass, fill it up with some smoke and start shooting away. So let's do that, let's give it a go. Some smoke in the glass. I don't wanna do loads at first. I don't want to absolutely fill it up, but even straight away, it's starting to come out of the glass. We've got that sort of mistiness inside. But once I've kind of poured it out of the machine, it does start to kind of settle into more of a fog and I actually want some texture in there. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit more, let it settle for a minute and then just waft. Or just blow it slightly. As I do, that's when it mixes it up and you start getting a load of texture and things going on. But at this point, my settings are all dialed in, my light's dialed in exactly as I want. So it now just comes down to finding the right blend of smoke. See, this is too much. It has left a slight residue, so I am gonna have to grab my cleaning cloth. Just polish up the top of the glass. While I'm at it, let's just give the whole surface a little wipe down. So now we're essentially starting from scratch. Glass is in position. Check my focus again. I've been manually focusing for this. Given the glass a little bit of a polish, and I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. So again, just about playing around with all the smoke. I'm gonna start with a little bit inside. I definitely think less is more. Because I want a subtle 
smokiness. I don't want it to look like the room is on fire. Well, I have made this room way smokier than it should be, so I'm gonna take these photos from the camera into Lightroom and Photoshop and see how we can make them look even better. So here we are at my computer, Lightroom ready to go. Apologies for the big blank space behind me. I did have a nice picture hanging up here, but it fell down and hit me on the head. Good stuff as always. So. As you can see, I've taken quite a lot of photos uh, on this photo shoot. I've taken uh, a few hundred, in fact, because obviously the smoke is not a static thing. It moves around, it swirls, sometimes there's too much, sometimes there's not enough. For example, this shot, I tried putting a lot of smoke in and it didn't really work. But then as I sort of gently breathed onto the scene, that stoke started billowing, moving away and dissipating. And as it did, it kind of reveals something like this. Now, this is the sort of shot that I'm looking for, something that's got that nice swirling motion, but it's not overpowering the scene with just a big blanket of white smoke. Some shots like this are a bit more subtle with just a little bit of the smoke inside the glass, and I quite like that too. I do quite like this sort of thing where it's clearly like some liquid smoke inside the glass and it's pouring out, but it's a little bit too much still because we've just got this sort of blanket of uh, white smoke along the bottom. I just think it looks a little bit cheesy, you know, something from a horror film where a, a mad professor would have a, a bottle of something and it would be billowing smoke like this. And that isn't really the vibe I'm going for here. I do also just really like the clean look like this where without the smoke at all. I mean, actually on this, there's a little bit of that sort of uh, smoky residue that's caught the light and that's given a really nice sort of matte finish just across the middle of the scene. But we've got really crisp lighting on the glass and lovely orange tones. Now, speaking of that lighting, actually, I mentioned about having the thin light versus the uh, uh, thicker strip light. And some of my earlier shots, you can see here, this one has got quite a thick highlight running all the way up. But then, as we go later into the scene, you can see that we've got a much thinner highlight going on here, which I do prefer. And I think even more so here. I've really ramped up the contrast here, but um, you get my point. Some of these other ones as well, you know, far too much smoke, the glass is completely obscured. Uh, these ones, there's none. So it really is about taking many shots to try and find that point where it's uh, it looks good. And you can really only do that by firing away, taking more and more and more shots. And that's just gonna increase the odds that one of those shots is gonna give you the exact composition that you're looking for. And for me, this is my favorite shot because we've got the, a really nice amount of smoke that's mostly going along the table and it's coming up around the glass. We've got lovely sort of uh, little, little plumes and curls of smoke. So over some really nice texture, it's not just one sort of blanket of flat looking smoke. And I really like the highlight on the glass. We've got great shape and form to it. So generally I'm really pleased with how this looks. So I'm just gonna show you quite quickly some of the changes I made to uh, kind of amp this up into something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more impressive, hopefully. Uh, first of all, it's quite dark. So I'm just gonna increase that exposure. I don't wanna go too far because we're gonna start bringing in too much of the background and um, some of the, uh, other sort of shadow details that I don't want. So increase it by about 0.5, maybe lift the shadows just a little bit as well. I'm gonna give those whites a boost. Now the whites I find are really important with this kind of thing because it helps add a lot of that sort of mid-tone contrast. I'm also gonna give some actual contrast and maybe just slightly pull back the highlights just by a couple of little bits. So before and after, we've basically just brightened it up 
added a little bit of contrast. Now, I'm not really changing anything with the white balance. It's just as shot at the moment, and I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I'm gonna tweak uh, my color mix um, in a moment, but first I'm gonna go down to effects, and first of all, I'm just gonna add a little bit of clarity to the whole image. And when I say a little bit, it's actually quite a lot, plus 20. Now, often in, in photography, we don't really touch the clarity slider all that much because it makes things go a little bit crunchy and a little bit sharp and weird looking. But actually, that's kind of what we want here. Um, so I'm going to be using it fairly liberally. First of all, plus 20 to the whole image. But then I'm going to go back in with the brush tool. And I'm specifically just going to paint in quite a bit of clarity plus 30, and also some extra white detail. And I'm gonna paint that in just to the smoke. And as I do, you can see, you can hopefully see a little bit anyway, how it's really bringing out more of those smoky details. And I really, really like how that looks. If I just go back down to our clarity, and I'll just take that down to zero. If I pulse that up and down, just look at how much more all of those smoke details really pop out. So I actually think I'm gonna go further than I had it at before. I'm gonna go plus 50, because I really want that smoke to stand out. I'm gonna do another brush, and this one is just gonna be for the orange of the actual whiskey. So just like that. I'm not gonna do the reflection, don't really need to. I'm just gonna up the whites, up the shadows, up the contrast, up the exposure, and then up the saturation. So we're starting to get somewhere. I'm starting to like this shot even more. So now let's go into our color mix. And I think I'm just gonna grab those yellows because if I just keep that at basically zero, we've got a patch here that's just a little bit, bit of a weak looking yellow. Uh, it's a very rich, um, I mean, it's not really whiskey, it's actually, it's a cheap brandy, but um, I still, I want to make sure that it looks like a nice golden orange color. So I'm gonna bring the hue of that yellow down. Uh, maybe just increase the luminance and the saturation a little bit. The orange, if we go much with the hue, it goes pink and then red. So I wanna be very careful with how we use it, but I do wanna drop it a little bit because it does make that look like a really deep, rich color. I'm gonna increase the luminance and then increase that saturation. Now if I just turn off the color mix and back on, see it's made a huge difference to this shot. We've gone from having slightly greeny yellows in some of these uh, spots to having a lovely gold, deep golden color, which I really, really like. I don't really think we've got any other colors. We might have a little blue cast, so I'm just gonna desaturate the blues, desaturate the purples, desaturate the magentas. And the only other thing I'm going to do is just get my brush. I'm just gonna paint over the orange parts of the scene like this, the specifically orange parts, including that reflection. Then I'm gonna right click on that mask. I'm going to invert it. So now it's selecting everything except that mask. And now I'm just gonna drop the saturation, not all the way down, but with a lot of color cast uh, in the smoke. And if I just take this down to zero, and then back up, you can see exactly how much there is. So I don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom, but some, but quite a lot, I think, just helps uh, it really stand out as smoke versus whiskey. So minus 60 is where I'm gonna go. I have realized that um, I've put in uh, a spot there that I shouldn't, so is that going to add more? That's adding more. So let's go subtract with a subtraction brush, and I can just paint that bit away just to make sure that we're keeping in all of that color where it should be. And I could go all the way, but let's keep a little bit of color in there. Just I just don't want much. So yeah, in the, in the minus 60s is good for me. So let's take a look at our before. It's a good looking image, but it's it's pretty dark, it's pretty flat, it's pretty low contrast. So with the steps that we've taken, in particular that clarity brush, we've really brought this image to life. We've got some great texture, those smoke, curls really stand out nicely. Um, but the only thing I wanna do now is a little bit of cleanup. Um, so I'm gonna take the image over into Photoshop. I'll just start off by duplicating my layer just so that I've got my reference point to go back to. And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna grab my spot healing brush tool and I'm just gonna be able to move around the image. And I've noticed that we've got a few dust spots from my sensor in the smoke. And I'm just gonna start clicking around and cleaning up the image. I'm not yet going to touch the glass. I'm gonna to come back to that. I'm just going through and making sure that we've not got anything 
major on our image. I think around the uh, around the base and on the surface and in the smoke, that's all we really need to do. Um, but there's a little bit more that I want to do on the glass because we have got quite a few marks on here. So I'm going to start off again just using the spot healing brush on some of these some of these spots and some of these bits here. So it's super easy. It just takes a lot of time to go around clicking away. So anything that stands out like these little blotches, I don't really want. I want it to look clean. I want it to look neat. Unfortunately, one thing that I have done is uh, I took this shot after having done some smoke on top of the glass. Now that's left a bit of a residue. So we've got a bit of a matte finish here rather than it being clear glass. Now that's a shame because there's not really a lot that I could do or rather I could be that bothered to do to fix it. I am going to try a little quick fix in a moment which I will show you. But even some of these uh, defects they just kind of stand out as looking a little bit uh, messy. All I really want is that um, nice highlight. Sometimes this can take ages, sometimes you can get through it pretty quickly. High quality retouching is crucial if you are doing commercial level product photography. Obviously if you're just playing around and you just want to get a fun shot and you're experimenting with at home macro techniques then you know you don't need to spend anything like this uh, this much time doing your retouching. So that's pretty much all I'll do with the spot tool. If I just turn that off and on, you can see it's just taken away a few of these little distracting elements. I'll zoom in a bit. So that glass just looks a little bit cleaner, fewer distractions. Your eye instead goes to the lovely color of the spirit. It goes to that highlight. It goes to the form of the glass, not these little bits of debris or potential chips or whatever they were. And so if I was just doing this for myself, this is probably as far as I would go. I think it looks great. It looks nice and it's a clean image. I love the smoke. I love the color. I'm really, really pleased overall. I will just try and see if I can clean up this sort of haziness that we've got. I'm going to try and do that using the pen tool by essentially drawing around this highlight. Um, this isn't a tutorial on the pen tool. It can be a little complicated to use. So if you've never used it, uh, then I recommend finding a specific tutorial. I am not great with the pen tool. I know the very basics of how to use it. And I should probably spend more time learning how to use it. But there we are. I should probably do a lot of things. So what I'm doing, as you can see with this pen outline, it's essentially, I'm trying to isolate this section of the glass. I'm not um, I'm not selecting the, uh, the highlight, and I'm also not selecting this outside edge, because what I'm gonna do is try and paint a dark color, that background color, in this area. In so doing, hopefully it's gonna look like it is a clean glass that is simply showing the background. So I'm gonna right click, make selection. Uh, I don't want any feathering, or do I? one pixel. So I'm going to get my brush tool. I'm going to do this on a new layer. I'm going to sample my color from the background, bring up my brush tool, larger size, and I'm just going to paint in that color. I don't want to go too far because it will look a little bit obvious what I've done. That might be everything I do. And I deselect. It definitely already looks a little bit much. So I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to get my brush tool with a darker color, lightly paint this away here just so that it looks a little bit more believable. And then if I fit that back on screen and we have a look, I think that definitely looks a little bit better. If I turn that off, you can see it's very uh, gray. It's got all this residue on it, which is making it look a bit dirty and a bit matte. But by painting this in, it's not removed it completely. If we did, if I, if I went that with one solid color, it would just look really weird and fake. But by just taking the edge off, I think it's uh, given us a bit of a cleaner look where the glass actually looks clean. I've tried to refine it a little bit, and I do. I think it looks good. It's, it's the sort of thing that if you know what's happened, like we've been watching this video, we saw what it was like, and we can turn it off and see exactly what it was like. If you saw the before and the after, you might look at it and go, doesn't look quite right. But I think if you just saw this image without having seen the process, you might not realize that anything had been done. At least that's what I'm hoping. 
I would certainly spend a lot more time doing that sort of retouching if this was for a commercial client, but just for the sake of this video, I'm showing you most other techniques that I would use to do this sort of work. So that is basically everything I would do. And I'm really pleased with how this shot looks. It was uh, at first just a little bit of a fun idea, but actually I really like that it does combine macro stuff with close focusing. It combines very refined use of lighting. And then we've got that lovely smoke using the smoke genie smoke machine. That's what it's called, right? Yes. Now the Smoke Genie is a professional tool and it comes with a typically professional price, but you can try this sort of thing with a vape pen. As I've said before, some of the shots I've done using smoke before, I have simply done with a standard vape and I've blown it through a drinking straw. I also know of photographers who will use uh, incense sticks like this or other things just to put in a little bit of smoke around there. So there are any number of ways that you can do this, but for me, using this as an actual tool really helps you get great looking professional results much more easily. But that brings me to an end of today's video. I really hope that it has been enjoyable seeing how I would uh, come up with and put together a shot like this. If you have enjoyed the video, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.